This is probably going to be the only video on YouTube actually talking not just about the advantages, but also the disadvantages of Dubai Islands. From airplane noise to affordable beachfront properties, we will cover it all. It's super windy and super sunny here on Dubai Islands, a new beachfront destination in the very north of Dubai. The buildings behind me are part of Sharjah, a neighboring emirate and city. This is how far north we are. This is Dubai Islands in the far north of Dubai, right on the border with neighboring city and emirate Sharjah. Dubai Islands are the remnant of a much larger project called Palm Dewa. Palm Dewa was supposed to become the third and by far the largest palm island in Dubai after the already completed Palm Jumeirah and Palm Jebel Ali. While reclamation works started in the mid-2000s, they were abruptly halted in 2008 due to the great financial crisis during which property prices across Dubai crashed by up to 50% depending on the neighborhood. On satellite imagery you can clearly see the extent of the original plans. As not just the base of the palm, but also the tip have been partially reclaimed. Palm Dewa was supposed to extend twice as far out into the sea as Palm Jumeirah. And even the portion of Palm Dewa that was reclaimed is larger in size than Palm Jumeirah. Around five years after the 2008 financial crisis, the government company behind the Palm Islands, Nakheel, published plans for a partial revival of the project. While Palm Deva wouldn't be completed, at least for now, the already reclaimed land will be used for a new mixed-use development under the new name Dewa Islands. That name stuck for around 10 years until 2022, when the site was again renamed into Dubai Islands. The previous name Dewa Islands is based on Dewa, Dubai's historic city center on the northern shore of Dubai Creek. Dewa is home to Dubai's Gold Souk and among the city's most densely populated neighborhoods. In the mid-2010s there was an overall shortage of commercial real estate, particularly storefronts for small traders, many of which operate in Dewa. It therefore appeared reasonable at the time to make use of the already reclaimed land nearby to add urgently needed storefronts. For that reason, the first two projects launched on Dewa Islands were a gigantic night souk with around 5,000 storefronts, as well as a huge shopping mall named Dewa Mall. And construction for both projects quickly went ahead, even before any residential projects were in place. As part of the transformation, Nikhil also started construction of two family vacation resorts, a Rio Hotel and a Centaur Hotel. Both of these brands entered the UE market for the first time, with Rio being based in Spain and Centaur in Thailand. However, shortly after these commercial projects started construction, the real estate market in Dubai went south. In the period between 2016 and 2020, property prices across Dubai took a downturn. As a result, no further projects were announced here for a long time. In addition, three more challenges hampered the development of Dubai Islands. Let's cover them in detail. Challenge number one is the remoteness of the development from traditional higher-end tourist and business hotspots such as downtown Dubai and Dubai Marina. While Dubai's historic city center is nearby, few high-spending international tourists and businessmen want to spend the majority of their time in or near crowded Dewa. Dewa has some of Dubai's lowest hotel room rates and mostly attracts budget-conscious visitors. It's difficult for a new neighborhoods such as Dubai Islands to overcome the association with Dubai's old town. The second challenge is traffic. Driving into or out of Dewa and Dubai Islands 
during rush hours can be highly time intensive, especially if you want to go to downtown or the faraway Dubai Marina. A new highway connection going through Dewa into Dubai Islands was recently opened, including the so-called Infinity Bridge, which reminds of the Infinity Symbol. However, it's still a far drive away from more popular neighborhoods and therefore isn't necessarily the most convenient place to live in if you work in Dubai's financial district or business bay. There's very limited to no infrastructure in place, no supermarket, no company headquarters and not much to do overall. So you do have to drive everywhere and often end up in traffic. The third challenge is a big one, airplane noise from nearby Dubai International Airport. Dubai islands are located right underneath the flight path of the airport and no matter where on the islands you're located, you can clearly hear airplane noise. Just have a listen. Dubai Airport does not have a night flight ban, unlike airports in most European countries. There has been news of a potential relocation of Dubai International Airport to a new site in the south of the city. However, that is uncertain as we analyze in detail in another video here on our YouTube channel. Check out the link in the top right or in the description. Let's return to the current state of Dewa Islands. The large mall in the center of the main island was never completed and Nakheel is currently looking for buyers of the complex. Just to give you an idea of the size of the mall, its measurements are around 560 meter times 660 meter, which is comparable to the huge Dubai mall in downtown. It was supposed to have a retractable roof for open air shopping during winter months, as well as an ice rink. Now let's turn to the night market with around 5000 storefronts. Unlike Dewa Mall, the night market was actually completed. The complex is an almost unbelievable 1.9 kilometers long and features an open air design. The market consists of disconnected buildings and most storefronts were built to face the outside, with only a few stores lining air conditioned hallways on the inside of buildings. Now having an open air design is a bit of a challenge in a city in which walking outside is too hot for half of the year. As a result, the owner Nikhil retroactively retrofitted a small portion of the development adding a roof on top of the gaps between buildings. While the area was envisioned as a night market with food stalls for people to enjoy in the evenings, the small section that did open is now a wholesale market that's primarily visited by business owners looking to source goods. It is now known as Souk Al Marfa. However, there are already reports that the entire market will be shut down or possibly relocated. By the time you watch this video, it may already have ceased operations. Let's see what the future holds. A recent development is Dubai's newest public beach, which we already visited right at the beginning of this video. The beach is free to access for anyone and will be the main attraction for the adjacent residential neighborhood now under development. A Starbucks is about to open here. A number of property developers are launching apartment buildings within walking distance of the beach. And at the lowest prices for beachfront properties anywhere in the UE besides Ras Al Khaimah and Arjuman, two emirates in the north of the country. 
Nakia, the master developer behind Dubai Islands, is reserving some of the more attractive plots in the east and north for its own residential developments. These areas are more attractive because noise levels from the airport are somewhat lower. They face the open ocean rather than a lagoon. Just like anywhere else in the world, lagoons tend to have less water circulation and as a result lower water quality compared to the open ocean. Projects here include the Bay Villas and the Bay Grove Residences. These are offered at attractive prices for beachfront properties in Dubai. However, they're still subject to airplane noise. There's also news of a golf course being built here. We provide Dubai's only 100% independent real estate advice. For independent market analyses, including price and return forecasts for any property in Dubai, contact us at the DubaiNavigator.com by WhatsApp or by email. Or book a free consultation on our website. Thank you for watching.